Good morning, everyone. Good morning. You, oh, it's like a, like my secondary school class. <laughs> um, so, um, we we founded this company like one and a half year ago, uh, in in the Bay Area. Uh, both of us worked in database for a long time. Uh, we both came from University of Wisconsin, Madison. Uh, worked with Dewitt and uh, Jeff Norton and all those people. Um, so we worked in multiple um, database companies before, and uh, and you can see that I think the only missing experience here is Oracle, but, <laughs> <laughs> but almost everything is there. Um, so I'm going to talk about data warehouse, right? So in the beginning, um, you know, if you if you run a, a website pre Amazon days, what you're going to have is a Postgres database, and then you're going to have app servers on top and some PHP code, right? But almost any startup start with this. And then you discovered that, you know, business was good. Now you, one single box is not enough. Uh, it's not fast enough, it's not, uh, it, it doesn't have enough I.O. bandwidth, whatever. So you start to partition your data, right? You start to say, um, you either partition vertically by, by business segment, or you shard it, right? And in some cases, it's not. So, in some cases, it's not possible or easy to shard your data. So, if you run a, if you run, if you are someone like Salesforce, it may be easy to shard, right? Because you can say this customer go to this PG, and that customer goes to that Postgres, right? But if you run a a, a marketplace like Upwork or Facebook, uh, you're going to join data between. Uh, many people, and you cannot put everyone who is connected in one box and everyone who is connected in another box, right? Because there's always interconnects. So, so you add multiple Postgres boxes, and uh, you you serve your data, and then eventually, you will need a data warehouse, right? Because there's going to be people asking about analytics. Uh, how do I know how many people sign up today? Uh, how many people sign up? Uh, last month versus this month. What's my year over year increase in in uh, revenue um, by by month by year, right? So you're going to need a data warehouse. So what what is a data warehouse, right? So um, in 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 a very simple terms, these are the two different things here, right? Think about this. This is my SQL, and this is data warehouse. Postgres is somewhere in here. Um, I think now the technology makes it fast enough now that it's going, uh, it, it can reach over on, on the other side. Um, but still, this is the, the landscape, okay? So the difference is in OLTP, when you're serving your web pages, you're going to retrieve single rows. You're going to go, you know, this guy logs in, I want to check his password, okay? Give me uh, his name, I retrieve his, uh, uh, his uh, record via index, and then I compare the the MD5 hash or whatever of the passcode uh, of the password, right? So we're going to run queries in, in milliseconds, okay? And each of these queries are single tuple retrievals. You cannot afford to do m multiple tuples or um, you know hundreds of IOPS just to serve one one uh, web request it will, will kill you essentially, right? Okay, it should be it should be simple stuff for you guys, uh, um, and. Uh, um, your database is probably less than a terabyte, right? It, 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 because you only store data that is relevant now. So if I if I update my uh, my uh, address, um, you are not going to store my old address. You're going to overwrite the address field with my new address, right? So that's that's in uh, OLTP. Um, and then you know you have uh, you have databases, and then you have multiple app servers that are connecting to the database. But you're going to get like hundreds of connections, right? And depending on how many app servers you have, you're going to get hundreds to thousands of connections. Um, and then you're going to provide hot data to, to, to the web users. O obviously, there may be some memcached um, instances in front, but essentially the data is, is quite hot. And you want to keep the memcached uh, data uh, up, up to date as well, okay? But if you look at the um, data warehouse side, um, 
we don't usually do single tuple retrieval because it's, it's not interesting, right? We want to see, uh, we do big table scan because, you know, we retrieve many, many, rec almost a whole chunk of records. And if you have to go through indices, uh, the price you pay to go through a B tree and to retrieve the, the each tuple, it, it's, it's way too much. Uh, I think you, someone came up with a ratio, you know, if you have to do uh, index retrieval, you might as well retrieve 18,000 uh, uh, tuples would be equal to retrieving one index. Uh, if you want to retrieve one row through index, uh, you can do it in the same time as 18,000 tuples, right, in sequential scans. Um, and then the queries run for a long time, right? These are, these are, these are queries that tell you business intelligence uh, data. So you, you let it run a few hours, um, and then you get a report. Right, it's not it's not um, interactive, uh, and then you have uh, uh, many years of data. Like I said just now, if I change my address uh, in the data warehouse, you would store uh, my previous address and my current address uh, in in the database. So it would be it would it's what they call a a, a dimension table, a slowly changing dimension table, so that it also keeps a history of of the um, everything that happened in in those days. Um, can and and then you have a handful of connections. So you have, you know, you can afford to buy thousands of copies of Tableau, right? You probably have twenty analysts, and each one have uh, a copy of Tableau, and then they just connect to the to the database. Okay, and then this this uh, data warehouse will provide uh, a summary or or report to users. Questions. So some, some of the vocabularies that we deal with uh, between the two is, uh, you know, on OLTP, you, you have indices, you have referential integrity, you have uh, TPC, C, t uh, you know, transactions per seconds. Um, you know, if you run queries that are a few hours, that, that takes a few hours, you don't care about transaction per second, right? <laughs> you, you, you want to make it uh, run, small, run faster. And then some of the database, uh, you know, that, that does t uh, OLTP pretty well are uh, listed there. Um, but in, in data warehouse, you have Windows functions, you have rollout, you have cube, right? Uh, and then you have, you will partition your fact table. So a fact table is, uh, if you think about, um, if you think about a, a retail, uh, Walmart or, or Target store. Um, so you're going to have, a, a, the fact table basically store um, the transactions. So this person, this ID buy A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? And how much? How much? How much? So, and each of those is a, is a row, and one one slip is an order, and each item is a row. Okay, and then you basically store those in in a in a partition by month or by day, depending on how big how how big um, uh, the the store is, uh, and you store like twelve months of it because you well these days maybe you can afford to store more, but usually in the old days they they store twelve months of data. Uh, so, you know, in February, um, I, I store all, all my transactions in uh, the fact table in the February partition. And then in March, I throw away the last year's February and I create a new March partition and then I store my new records there. Okay. And then you have uh, ETL, ELT, you know, extract, transform, load, and extract, load, and then transform. Uh, MPP is a massively parallel database. You you, you basically, um, it's like sharding, but you can do joins in between. Okay, and the data is, is partitioned and it's not, uh, sh uh, it's, it's a shared nothing architecture. Okay, and then the, the benchmarks are TPCH and, uh, and the new one that came out, TPCDS. Um, so this one has about 22 queries and this one has um, 99 queries and I don't know how you <laughs> how you, you talk about 99 queries, right? Uh, and then some of the MPP databases are, are Vertica, uh, Greenplum, Exadata from uh, Oracle and, and Teradata. Okay. Small introduction. So what, what is analytics, right? So, so you have your Postgres serving your website nicely and your analyst was running their big queries here. And when they run their big queries here, you, you disrupt the, uh, the, web, the, web, the web traffic, right? Because these big queries are going to 
to page in so, so much data that it's going to kick out your hot data. And then, you, and then you run into trouble serving your website. And then the CEO says, no, come on. <laughs> the website is more important than analytics, right? So now you, you go out and you buy a, a Green Farm database, or Vertica, or some of those um, um, MPP databases. And then you do uh, synchronization or um, lo loading between the two. Right? And then you let your analysts access uh, Green Farm DB using um, you know, BI tools like Tableau. Okay. Um, so what do we do here? other than just copying the data, right? If you just copy the data, it's not very interesting. You have the, the whole copy of your transactional data, okay? But it's not very interesting. So what you want to do is you want to use this processing power that you have now to tag your users. So, you know, think about American Express card, right? You have platinum cards, you have gold card, you have silver card. So on your website, you probably have gold users, platinum users, and uh, normal everyday users. <laughs> so, so using some uh, business rules, uh, you can write some SQL on, on the Green Farm database or on the MPP database that you, uh, you using some, some uh, rules that your analysts define, you can, you can say this user is gold and this user is silver or, and this user is, uh, is a fraud user and uh, you know, I don't want him to log in ever again. Just, just tag it, right? So tagging, so you, once you tag uh, the data, now you, you basically have intelligence, right? You know someone who is more important than the other and who you, you really don't want to see anymore and who buy what more at, at, at which time of the year, right? So, but then those, those uh, data sitting here doesn't help your website, okay? So what you want to do is take data from Postgres, move it into MPP, Run your aggregates or your your um, your your rules to 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 tag users, and then you send it back over there, so that your website can can uh, your app server can retrieve them, right? Easy so far, huh? And then you know, it it's now. Uh, sexy to put things in AWS, and so what you want to do is uh, so you know you start to put Postgres RDS on Amazon, and you start to expand over there, right? And then the data has to come and sink down back to to Green Farm and push up all the way, right? So now um, it's kind of complicated, and and you may you may run into the uh, bandwidth problem when you push data up or load data down. Yes. So, a uh, typical question: uh, How does the uh, loading of the data from the main Postgres database happen to uh, your uh, warehousing database? Is it like an incremental load, or you just make a data? Ah, yeah. There are, there are a lot of tools that help you do that. Um, so, you can either do you can either do it low tech. You know, you for each row that you modify, you put a timestamp there, and then you say, you know, I I delete everything starting from midnight of last last night and then reload everything that tag with some timestamps that are bigger than midnight of last night, right? So that, that's the low tag way. And then the high tag way, you, you buy some, some, um, some software from Golden Gate or, and then they would help you do all this. Okay. And is it real time? It can, real -time um, well. it can be almost real time now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's something called Lambda architecture, and people kept talking about it. And so there was a lot of, uh, of uh, pressure to do it real time, especially when you're doing fraud detection. Okay. You, you want it real time. Um, so, so now, you have this big investment in, in Green Plum or Teradata, but uh, you're doing ETL on, on, on that machine, and it's owned by the IT group, right? It's owned by... Um, basically, data warehouse professionals. Um, so they define the. I, I talked about how you roll over the fact table, the partitions, and all those stuff, right? Those those require people uh, watching the the process. So it's basically managed by a bunch of professionals that um, that really don't want people to touch it. If you touch it now, I cannot do my ETL, and everything gets blocked. Okay, right? 
So, so what does this mean? You got the data there, and um, anyone else cannot touch it except the, the BI people, right? Except the, the, the IT analyst who, who is doing the uh, aggregates. So it, it, it becomes essentially a, a data jail. Right? The data goes in there and it just stays there, okay? Uh, and then the marketing department comes and say, hey, I, I really like this software, um, you know, Looker or some, some BI tool set that, that is different from what you're using, but I prefer that. I'm the CMO, I, I want to use that, okay? Now, now what do you do? Um, so we tested something called a loft. It, it's a, uh, uh, what we call a large optimized foreign table. Um, so you can synchronize your data over there, okay? It's a, it's a, uh, it's a column store that is remote, and it, it's file-based, okay? Uh, I'll talk about that later. <coughs> and then you can, each, you can give each department a Vitesse DB, right? And, and then they can access that. Okay, so essentially the data comes from here, got washed and uh, analyzed here, and then got pushed to, to a, some remote um, storage. And then you know, your departments can, can start to use it without impacting uh, this big investment here. Okay, so a little bit about Loft, okay? So, so it's a what it's you can think about it as as a um, a parquet server. Um, it it stores it stores the data in, in files, so that you know you don't have to lock the table lock the file before you lock the tables or records before you change stuff. Um, essentially, it's just in in Unix file you you create a new file you rename it and it's aut atomically replaced right. Um, so the the files are partition aware, so you know I just now when I say the fact table, uh, the this, the February call, the February partition gets written completely before it swaps out uh, the old partition. And then we have something called simple parquet format. Um, so we we did some work on parquet, and um, the format is is we use the C library that they provide, and and it's it's um, spending a lot of c CPU um, in 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 a uh, disassembling the, the, the columns. So we wrote something uh, that's a bit faster and we'll probably uh, open source that. And once you have the files or partitions or data or columns in, uh, in Loft, how do you access them, right? So in Postgres, we wrote uh, foreign data wrappers. So you can, you can create a foreign data wrapper on Postgres on, on Vitesse DB, or on Vitesse DB only that connect to the loft and then it you know and then you just run queries and and it would retrieve them okay um, so we test db a little bit this is basically postgresql for data warehouse uh, we take we take postgres we put in our execution engine the execution engine uh, is what you um, so you think about the query going into postgres you get you put it, put in the query in SQL. It goes through the optimizer. It goes through the parser and then the optimizer. The optimizer gives you a query tree, a plan tree. Okay, and what we do is we take the plan tree and we try to compile it in in using LLVM. Um, we do some data path optimization, and if we are able to do that, what we get is a a function that we can call, and that function will just execute the whole query. Uh, directly, right? If we cannot do it, then we pass it back to Postgres, and Postgres will do it iteratively. So it, Postgres will say, uh, we'll go through the plan tree like one level at a time. Yeah. If you're familiar with how um, uh, Postgres execution engine work, uh, it's, it's quite quite inefficient. So we can do scan um, as fast as 180, uh, sorry, 18 gigabyte per second. Okay. Um, so how do we how do we do this in in, in if you look at if you do a scan in in Postgres, you'll see that you can scan about 140 megabyte per second. Okay, uh, and that's because when you when you scan a, a table, when you read the table, you're going to get a tuple in serialized format, and then you are going to this. I think uh, you talked about it yesterday, uh, the, the day before. Um, <coughs> you're going to go through a lot of processing to to deserialize deserialize the tuple. Okay. In in our case, we know exactly, you know, you do a select on um, 
this table and with only the second and the fourth column. We know exactly which columns are required and we will generate the code to, to just retrieve the second and the fourth column. Right? And, then ev and then we skip the rest. And there's no if statement in there, it just go you know, get the second, get the fourth. Get a get a skip the first, get the second, skip the third, get the fourth, right? So that that's that's how we get to the, that speed. And we can do TPCH one hundred uh, in approximately three seconds. Postgres will take eight eight point five minutes. So this is TPCH Q one, uh, if you are interested. So when I say about, when I talk about fact table line item, that's that's the fact table in, in TPCH. Um, in this case, is there's about sixty six million rows and uh, I don't know how many gigabytes. But it's going to scan this table and it's going to go and do you know many sums and many averages and and accounts. Okay. So this is this query will touch millions of rows, not not the usual uh, OLTP um, queries. Um, this is uh, this is the timing for the test DB. Um, if you run Postgres, and this is not exactly fair, right? Because we we do we do LLVM compilation and we also do multi-threading. Okay, so on on this box there are like twelve threads running, um, and so Postgres single-threaded you get about 163 megabyte per second. Uh, on 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 the test DB. Vitesse DB is 100% compatible with Postgres. You can, so we also have the Postgres executable, and if you like, you can just copy this Postgres executable into your current Postgres instance, and it will just run, as long as the version match. All right. Um, so that's the timing we have for the query just now. What version is this based on? 9.3. 9.3. We're going to go to 9.5 pretty soon. So now this this, <laughs> this picture is, is getting uh, more, a, a lot more crowded, right? So you have this guy in loft, and then uh, and then you know, the company's direction is saying you know we need to go to AWS, uh, and then you you hire a data scientist team, and they are going to say okay I need more data I need more data, and there are, there are multiple. Basically, you know if you if you work in the in the data, um, IT part, you're going to keep getting this request. More people need the data, right? So we have a loft to loft sync and because it's file based, it basically it's you think about it like R sync, but with some intelligence in, in there. Um, so it just copy the data over to AWS and then it, uh, you can spawn multiple of these for each uh, of, um, for each um, an analyst or, or data warehouse uh, or data scientist team that you have. So it's pretty easy to, to extend. And each of them gets their own resources. You know, there's queries running here doesn't impact queries running here, but well, a little bit. But because of the data coming over, but here, if you run here, you probably won't uh, interfere with queries running over there. Okay. Where are we? Um, okay, done. Are we? Any questions? Yes. Uh, distribution of data across nodes. When you say that you're fully compatible with Postgres, how do you handle distribution? Uh, Postgres is single node. There's no distribution. Okay, but if I'm running the tests for, for threading or anything like, there's no distribution needs to happen. No. No. Okay. So this is so this is Postgres. It's not Big Green. Okay. Okay. So Postgres is is one single node and. Um, you know, if you the, the way we do threading is, is such that we don't um, if we have to hand data between the, the threads, it's going to store the processor, right? Uh, the first version that we did was twice lower, <laughs> and then you have to you have to make it. Um. So uh, yes. Before yesterday, I introduced um, Postgres Excel, right? Which is you know an open ah. source uh, yes. NTP for that or NTP kind okay. of uh, Any thoughts on? Um, so that product, uh, we addressed that through uh, our our um, Grimplum. We were talking about uh, our Grimplum uh, solution. So 
we put our engine into Green Plum. I think I have some slides here. Okay, so if you're interested, we talk about um, how, how the technology works and then we can go into that. Um, so what, why do we start Vitesse Data? It's because we thought you know, the hardware has obs obsoleted the software. Right? In the old days, everything is you, you op basically optimized for disk speed. Right? If, you can, if you can do less I.O., you don't care how much CPU uh, you're mm -hmm. using. Mm -hmm. You want to optimize for less I.O. But these days, um, how many of you have more memory than your data? <laughs> so, so if you go to Amazon, you'll see uh, people running on, on RDS. They have more memory available than their, their data set. So essentially, everything is, is in cache. Okay? So if you now, you know, optimizing for I.O. doesn't buy you much anymore. Right, so you know that's why when you see today, Intel keeps giving you faster, faster, more and more core CPU. You don't see any improvement in your in your database, right? But um, because that's because the, the 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 software was designed 30 years ago for to solve a different problem. Okay, so you know you have it has to be changed. Um, so what we do is we have we do JIT compilation using LLVM. Uh, you know, we do SIMD uh, optimization. Uh, we have data path optimization that's harder to get into. Essentially, you have to flip the query tree around. I think, it, I think some of the people starting to get it. Uh, if you look at Spark 2.0, uh, they're starting to do some of these. Uh, and then we have column store. And what we do here uh, at Vitesse is we emphasize compatibility, right? You don't have to change a line of code. Everything is the same, right? To Postgres, to or to GreenCloud, you just drop this thing in, and it just runs uh, uh, much faster. Um, okay, so so we we start after GreenCloud went open source, we start to put our engine into GreenCloud, and we I think we're going to release release it this month. Um, we're seeing some aggregates because we haven't put in any threading, so it's single single pro uh, sing, uh, it's still single thread, but each thread is going to run like five times faster than than Green, uh, than Green Plum for Q1. Um, so this TPCH 10G that we did on be between between Deep Green and and, and uh, Green Plum, and um, you know Q1 we are five times faster. Q5 is a six-way join, and, and we're three three times faster. That's an no picture. Does that answer your question? We're not touching Postgres XL or X2. Yes? You said that when Green Plum had open source, you were adding code to Green Plum? Does that mean your code, that part of your code is open source, or how does that work? No, uh, no we fork it. I see. It's the so same as. It's closed source fork of Green Plum that adds your features, is that what it is? Yes. Same thing with Postgres. Same thing as po with Postgres. Um, and. You know, many people have asked us why we don't open source, and if you think about it, um, our code is in C++, and even if we open source it, um, Postgres is not going to take it, right? There's, I don't see any reason. Um, I can do some demo if there's, if it's interesting. Do we have time? have time. Okay, great. So let's see. Maybe you want to increase the font size. Yes. A little more, I guess. And maybe a white background. Uh, yeah, you might want to be more visible. Switch the background, like white font and black. Uh, Black font. How do you do that? Uh, uh, let me see. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I have to have to do this on the fly. Yeah, we'll on the there you go. Yeah. Oh shoot! I probably have to start a new shell, right? You can, you can use the command in plus sign to increase the font. Uh, there's a no. I think there's a. I think I can do it. I can do it the other way. Okay. I can do it the other way. It's called flipping the display. 
So this is an instance running on on, uh, on Google Cloud. Um, so let's see. So we have uh, select PG size. So this gives you an idea of how big is the line item table. It's about eight, eight gigabyte. Okay, and then we can do a. We can show you what's um, Q1. So I, we put it into a view, and that is essentially Q1 right there. Okay, and I can do select star from Q1. <coughs> okay. So first time, two point three seconds. If I run again, it's about 788 millisecond. Okay. So if I put this, this is in Vitesse. And I can disable all the Vitesse optimization by setting a gut. So now, it, now it's in Postgres. It's going to take about a minute. And I can show you. Using the shared buffers, right? Yeah, yeah. They all they all use a shared. So we only replace the executor. We don't touch anything above or below it. So is it like you have added some extension on top of Postgres SQL, or is it like you have changed something in the core as well? Um, so there are hooks in Postgres where you can replace some part of the system. So it, when you when the query tree finish uh, when the query finish optimization, you get a tree, and then in the in Postgres, there is a hook that calls an ex uh, executor. Yes. So if you if you replace that with a if you put a hook in there, it will call yours, and then you so can either go back or. It is like you're still using the basic Postgres scale, but you have an extension like how Citus data has an extension. Um, you package it together, or, or how is that? No, we, we we used to have an extension. Um, we we no longer do that. We put it in a no, in a binary. I mean, in principle, how is that? Like you have Postgres SQL and an extension bound together, or yeah, bound like together, <coughs> bound together. Right. But, yes. But you are not giving away a, a, a separate extension. For other we used to do that, but th there wasn't a lot of demand, and and it's you know, for just the two of us, it's very hard to maintain uh, so many copies of stuff. Yes. Uh, so basically, you're not changing partner. Plan is the same, but uh, you're using one different executor. Per uh, Think about this as you know you have two cars in your garage. Yes. Okay. You can either pick the Postgres car or you can pick the Vitesse car. Yes, but, but the plan is the same. Our plan will be the same. The plan is the same. Like like the driver is the same, but you can go. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> take, take one or the other. <laughs> yes. I remember years ago there were some obviously converting the executor to to C required you to duplicate. A lot of the algorithms in the executor. Yes. Uh, we years ago, you we were only able to emulate some types of plans. Is that still so true, or do you emulate no yeah. plans? Yeah, we 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 emulate ev we we do almost all the plans, um, but obviously, if you want to ship a product and you have to do all the plans, it's going to take 
a long, long time, yeah. right? So, so as I said, we have a fail safe. If you give me a query, I try to compile it, and I was not able to compile it. I throw it back to Postgres. Mm -hmm. So now you have 100% right. so compatible. It's like a totally new executor here? It's a totally new executor. Are you not using the uh, per tuple going up? Or mm, no. Some different stuff yeah, we, 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 Are yeah. you still using the buffer manager? We're still using the buffer manager. So if you look at the pgconf talk that I gave uh, last year, uh, you, you'll see how we do the other. The, the way I think it's, it went into quite a bit of detail how we get into um, get this this kind of speed. So what's the single summarizing thing which makes it so fast and so fast as compared to? Um, so if you, okay, so <laughs> so you want to think about this, right? You think about in the old days you have disk and this is the limiting factor, right? And then you have CPU. So these days, you're, if you have everything in memory, now where is your disk? Now your memory is your disk. Your, your CPU, your L1, L2 cache is your buffer pool. Okay? So with the old executor, you are going to, do, you're going to run it like in the old days, you run it without the buffer pool. Right? You're going to disk all the time. Okay? With this, you're going to hit mostly the L1, L2 cache. So how did that happen? Um, I, I mentioned a little bit just now. When I get a tuple, when I deserialize it, I know exactly which field I need. And when I deserialize it, it's hot. It's right there, right? And when I deserialize it, it's in the 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 um, the top the the columns that I need are in registers, right? So in a scan, right after you serial you deserialize, what do you do? You filter. Okay, so in our case, when we filter, we filter the registers. Okay. That's ten times at least, right? So you don't have any like, slot business, basically. Uh, no slot business. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you pull more stuff in the CP registers, and therefore you're not hitting the memory as quick. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. It's just physics. Yeah. Like column store, it's physics. Okay. And you've been at this for obviously four years. No. Three. Two. Two, just two years. Okay. I remember. I guess I remember hearing about what you were doing a while. No, back. we 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 started the company September of 14, 2014. Okay. Did you work on it before then, or no? I haven't heard about this. No. Okay. But uh, the the skill set is very different, right? You need someone who knows. Um, Assembly language, uh, you know, database, and you need to mesh them together. Uh, so there is uh, some assemble, assemble, assembly in line, in line for function, not only C++. Right. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's LLVM. Very, very low level stuff. It's LLVM. Okay. So you think about the think about how many lines in the executor, and we basically wrote we wrote all that in assembly. Okay. <laughs> just, just curious, like you know, you're developing something on top of, and, and you know, you have created your own executor. Any reasons why you chose Postgres SQL to to build your product on, or? Uh, um, because we are familiar with Postgres. We we both came from Grimplum. We worked on Postgres before. Uh -huh. uh. Right. Okay. Are we time? Like, uh, four, five more minutes. Okay. More, more questions? Can, uh, or otherwise, we can take more questions. Otherwise, we